Hey, my name is Nate Savage and welcome to the Guitar Fam YouTube channel or the Guitar Fam site, wherever you're watching this. Um, if this is your first song on the guitar, congratulations. This is a great one to get into because there are only two chords and you can keep the strumming as simple as you want and gradually you know, get more advanced with it as you go along. I'll show you the chords in this video, give you some tips for your uh, fretting hand to make playing chords sound clean and then make the chord changes really smooth and also give you some tips for your strumming hand and this is a great vehicle um to get into the guitar you know horse with no name by america is a classic song and it's fair, relatively easy to jump into and just play along with some simple strumming and some chord changes now having said that if if you are new to the guitar the number one mistake um that i hear a lot of people well it's not even a mistake it's a misconception that I hear a lot of my students make is like, I didn't think or didn't realize it would take me so long to get a song to where I could play through it all together, you know, performance ready. And that's true for everyone. Almost everyone overestimates or underestimates how long it's going to take to build the skills you need to learn to play the guitar. But the best way to do this is to use easier songs like this to work on your skills, you know, as far as the core things like strumming, timing, uh, clean chords and uh, you know clean chord transition so be encouraged with that there are loads of songs easy songs on the guitar fam side that you can go and dig into after you get this down and take it as simple as you can if you can only play whole notes throughout the song that's totally fine if your chords don't sound perfectly at first that's okay too. just implement the things you're gonna um, learn in this video and they will get better and we have plenty of resources on the guitar fam site for you to get better at these basics too. If you haven't already, go to guitarfam.com and create your complimentary account. You'll get access to the first module of all of our premium courses. So those things will help you a lot. And as you progress along the way, you can email us with any questions that you may have, support at guitarfam.com. And if you can, if you want to, you can upgrade to a premium account for just $9.97 a month or hundred bucks a year. All right, if you're brand new to the guitar and this is your first song, um, I'm going to give you a principle here that's really good to carry out for the rest of your time playing guitar, and that's to break things up into their smallest components and separate the challenge instead of trying to um, tackle a whole song at once. Like, oh, I'm going to learn this song, and I just started playing guitar. I started trying to... Because you're going to have to work on a few things all at once. You're going to have to work on clean chords, you have to work on chord changes, clean chord changes. You're going to have to work on your strumming, your timing, and then the full layout of the song. Where is the song going? That's five things you have to tackle all at once. And that's a lot. Again, it's, it's too much. That's why a lot of people end up quitting playing the guitar. It's because they start trying and they think it's way harder than it should be. And it is because they're not separating the challenges. So that's exactly what we're going to do here. I'm going to give you some tips for each of those areas. Uh, first off, if you have a pick, if you don't have a pick, that's fine. Just put your fingers together like you have a pick, just naturally, and then strum like this. Just super relaxed. And when you strum, I'm going to go ahead and pick up a pick. If you have a pick, just put it in between your thumb and forefinger, just as naturally as you can. Don't worry too much about it. The things to remember, don't death grip the pick. And try not to dig into the strings too much. If you death grip the pick, it's going to be really hard to get the, the pick through the strings. So keep a really light grip on the pick. And try not to strum just from your elbow like this, because that can create a lot of tension. I just pretend like I'm trying to flick something off of my pinky. And that's a good kind of rotational, like you're turning a doorknob motion that you want to get when you're strumming. And I just play. Okay, we'll talk more about strumming as we uh, go through the different iterations or different difficulty levels of the strumming. But those are the things to remember as far as your strumming. Relaxed, don't dig in too much of the strings. Uh, keep a light grip on the pick get that rotational movement in there, okay? So what I would recommend doing is separating the challenge of strumming out, just even with just open strings, right? Just working on a little bit and start getting used to it before putting your strumming with all the other stuff like, you know, open chord, clean open chords and, you know, changing between chords. So there are only two chords that you need to play through the song. One's called an E minor, this is it. And then the other one, uh, for our purposes, we'll call it a D over F sharp, a D six nine over F sharp. The name of the chord is important right now. What's important is getting the shape down and making some music, right? So for an E minor, all you have to do is put your middle finger on the second fret of the A string, the second thickest string, and then your uh, third finger will go on the second fret, same fret, 
of the D string, the third thickest string. And there are a couple things you wanna remember when you're making chords. First is to start out with a nice neutral position. You don't want your hand kinked too far this way and you don't wanna to kink too far this way. If you kink it one far way or the other too far, it can cause pain and it can cause some trouble as far as you know making clean chords. So neutral position, just like somebody handed you their keys, right? And you have those in your hand, that's what you wanna do. Another thing for your, as far as making chords, don't have your arm up here. That'll create some problems too. What you wanna do is just let it drop to the side of your body and that's the general posture you want. You also wanna keep your fingers right behind the fret. So as close to right up on that fret as you can when you play this. And when you play, you want your hand, to, it's, my hand's not straight like this. It's kind of a little bit, uh, the grab, I'm letting the gravity make my wrist curved a little bit. That way I can get a good angle of attack on the string. So notice I'm coming in at like 35, maybe 45 degree angle like this to the strings. And then I'm trying to curve my fingers around. And I strum all six strings for this E minor chord. I try to curve them as much as possible. If I don't, I just kind of get lazy and let my hand kind of, my elbow flop out here. And I look down, when I look down, look what happens when my elbow goes out. Generally, that's what happens to people. And when that happens, I pull down my finger and it flattens out. And it starts to mute the neighboring strings, right? So that's not what you want. So just make sure to keep those things in mind. Elbow in. If you do look down, make sure you don't pull your elbow out like that. And then a uh, nice relaxed posture, neutral, a little bit curved this way to get some clearance on those strings right behind the frets. So I would make that like my second practice point. Just get used to strumming, number one, with those tips. And then get used to making this E minor chord and using those tips for making clean chords in the context of that E minor. And work on that first before putting them together to go through a chord progression or uh, you know, strumming along with the chord progression. So just get it on there. Check each individual string if it sounds like this. Check to make sure that this finger is standing nice and tall. And you may have to relax your wrist a little bit to let it curve a little to get that clearance. Make sure you're coming in at an angle like that. And that's what we want to practice. That's kind of your second pillar of practice is just getting, it's practicing your open individual chord shapes until they're clean and you can go right to them. And it takes consistency with the practice. That's another big thing that will help you as you progress. If you remember, consistency is king with practice. Okay? And you have to develop your technique. You'll have to remind yourself of how, you know, all these tips. And a really good tip for that is uh, to set up your camera on your phone or a mirror and to see if you're actually doing what you think you're doing. Because sometimes you could think uh, your elbow's down here or you're coming down right behind the frets or you know, you're not, you're coming in tall with your fingers or you're really not. So getting a second pair of eyes, as it were, on your chords can really help too. Okay, so kind of step three for this is to start changing between chords. And to do that, you have to have a second chord. So we have to learn this uh, D, sixth note over F sharp. And it's really cool because you're gonna use the same two fingers. All you have to do is widen them out each finger out one string. So your middle finger stays on that third fret and uh, second fret and goes to the low E string, the fattest string. And your third finger stays on that second fret again and goes out to the G string. And you wanna play all six strings. Okay, so you need to treat these two chords as their own individual little worlds and get to where you can go right to each individual one, you know, on their own. Remembering all the tips for clean chords. And by the way, if you are really new to the guitar, we have uh, quite a few free courses at guitarfem.com that will help you with these basics. Uh, the Chord Transition Trainer is a great one for this type of stuff. There's one in Music Theory, there's the Strumming Doctor, and uh, the first module of all of our premium courses like the Strumming Doctor is free to dig into. So go to the guitarfem.com site, create your complimentary account to get started for free today. But it, this will give you um, a more thorough uh, kind of path to follow for all these individual aspects of playing the guitar. But practice those individual chords on their own first and then put them together. This is another really good example of how um, separating the challenge into its individual components of learning a song is the best way to do this. You know, keep you from getting frustrated. So to work on the D over F sharp, D6 down over F sharp on its own. And when you do this, Take it off all the way, put it on, check each individual note, adjust if you need to. Okay? And then do it again. 
Do as many times as you can stand, which is probably only gonna be two or three minutes a day, right? Once you get comfortable with those chords, then it's time to practice switching between the two chords. So E minor, and I'm just gonna call this D over F sharp. Okay. So don't worry about playing this in time. All you have to worry about is switching between the chords and making the change smooth. If you notice one chord is lagging behind, that just means you need to put some more time on that individual chord separating the challenge there. But once you, you know, after a couple days or a couple weeks of working on this, you should be able to, you know. But once you can play, you know, these two chords and switch between about this fast, then you know it's time to move on to the next step, which is your timing. And this is the last step before putting everything together and starting to play it in context with the jam track or the original song, right? Um, the original tempo of this song, I believe, is in 123 beats per minute. Uh, so what I would recommend doing is just starting out very simple, um, because it's an eight note strumming pattern, we'll get into that more later. But what you wanna be able to do is just play along to quarter notes at 123 beats per minute. So the original tempo of the song. And if that's too much, you can just slow down. And I would start. Rec I would recommend doing this with just one chord at first. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And if that's too much, just do whole notes. So three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, Okay, and if you can do quarter notes, that's great, but this is probably the basic uh, starting point is gonna be for most people because we have to not only work on our timing, but we have to start incorporating uh, changing between chords. But before you do that, just put one chord on and get to where you can count out loud. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Play whole notes. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Then you can go half notes. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then quarter. One, two, three, four. Now don't feel like you have to be up all the way to the quarter notes right up to speed. The important part is just to get you to play through the song. If it's only whole notes at first, that's completely fine. Uh, the next step and kind of the final step is to do your chord changes one measure per chord in time with the metronome. So you're going to want to start off with whole notes because your concentration is going to be divided up into you know clean chords, chord changes. How am I strumming? Am I staying in time? All of these things. So uh, it'll look something like this. This is the next thing you want to shoot for. One, two, three. Four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Half notes. Three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And that really is the whole song it just goes back and forth between those chords each chord getting one measure each and take this as simple or as complicated as you want to make it if you can only do whole notes for now that's cool try to work and push yourself up to quarter notes and this is kind of a period full stop if you can do that you're doing really well now i want to get into um eighth note strumming but for this song it has something called an, a swung eighth note feel and to do that we're going to have to um talk a little bit about swung rhythm. You're gonna sing, see this in the blues a lot and things like that, but let me just give you an example. So if I had quarter notes with just all downstrokes, one, two, three, four. Eight notes would be just using my upstrokes that are already happening, so one, and two, one, two, three, four. Okay, um, now you're probably gonna find that the upstrokes get caught in the strings a lot easier than the downstrokes. So things to remember for that, to help that keep that from happening, is don't dig too much of the pick into the strings, just a little bit of the pick, just enough to make the, the strings sound out. Second thing to remember is you don't have to hit all of the strings. Even though we're playing all six strings, I'm only hitting the top three to five strings for my upstroke. And I'm holding on to the pick very lightly. I'm hitting it at an angle too, I'm not going straight. Like this, I'm hitting it at an angle so it glides off. So instead of this, I'm doing like this keeping that rotational movement going. So that's what you need uh, if you want to do the eighth notes. Now here is the kicker for this one. It's not straight eighth notes. It's not one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And 
it swung eighth notes, and that gives you kind of the connotation of the feeling of a flat tire going down the road. Da, 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 da. Okay, so what happens is the first eighth note, the downstroke, ends up feeling longer. Okay, and I don't want to make this video ultra long because I could spend you know 30 minutes on just a swing fill. Uh, for strumming and that's covered in the strumming doctor course if you want more details on that and how to develop that step by step i would recommend going through that but for now just listen to the song and you'll hear that feel as opposed to that that's all you need to get down for the feel for that so like kind of the almost the ultimate goal for the song is going to be just a swing feel like that using eight notes so Okay, and let me uh, sh let me play that a little less refined for you and just show you what it sounds like. Here you go, one, two, three, four. Now, the time before when I played it, you probably heard something like this. And that's a little, mo little bit fancier strumming. All I did was go one and, and then Two and I'd strum the bot the top string two. So the bottom strings on one and, and then the top strings on two, and then a three and back to the lower strings, four and the top strings. So when you alternate like that, it really gives a nice dynamic feel to the strumming pattern. You don't have to do that. It's just something to shoot uh, for in the future as you do it, and you slow it way down. I'm only hitting the, I'm not being very specific. I'm hitting a few bottom strings, one and two, and a few top strings. And that's the main strumming pattern um, that I would shoot for if I were you. Now, I do have a strumming pattern here for you that is more kind of um, a general representation of the strumming pattern that's going on in the song. So I'll show that to you as well, but feel free to use any of these strumming patterns. And remember the important part that is, here is to break things down into strumming technique, individual chords, then changing between chords, and then timing, and then putting everything together with whatever strumming pattern you can handle at the moment. All right, this strumming pattern is something to shoot for, and it um, incorporates something called the constant strumming technique, and that's the fact that one, and two, and three, and four, and my hand is keeping going to that, whatever my smallest note value is, da, 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 even if my pick isn't digging into the strings. So, for example, I have a quarter note, and then I have an upstroke. Since it's a quarter note, that upstroke's not digging into the string. So I have one and. Then the next beat, I have two and. Two eighth notes. So I have my down and my upper being used. So one and two and. Next eighth note is a muted strum. So I hit through the strings right before my pick hits the strings. My palm comes and mutes the strings. And I get a nice palm muted sound. And this takes a while to develop. This is just for fun. If all you can do, or if all you're interested in doing for your current skill level is the eighth notes or the quarter notes of the whole, it's go and do that. Play along with the song. The play along is at the end of this video, but for all of you out there who are interested, this is uh, the strumming pattern to get down to make it sound most like the recording. So quarter, eighth, eighth, muted eighth, upstroke eight, and two more eighths. Down, up. So down, down, up, down, up, down, up for the first measure, down, down, up, down, up, down, up. And the down on beat three is muted, so. Okay, that's the first half of the strumming pattern. When I switch to the D over F sharp, when I switch to that, I have down, up, Muted down, up. It's a quarter note though, so I don't hit the next down. I just make the motion, and then I go. Down. So down, up, muted down, up, no down, up, down. So let me put that in context so you can get a feel for it in time. Down.
Okay, so there are two different strumming patterns going on here. One for the E minor and one for the D over F sharp. And then we play both of them for you. One, two, of one, two, three, four. Okay, so that is the main actual strumming pattern in the song. But again, don't feel like you have to do that right now. The important thing for this song is to get to where you can play through an entire song. So when somebody says, hey, you can play guitar, play something, you can play even if it's just. Or. You'll be able to play through a full song. Okay, so that's it for this song. And the, really the important thing here, a couple of important things. Be very consistent with your practice, even if it's only 15 minutes a day. That's enough if you do it right to make really good progress. The second big thing I want you to remember is to divide the challenges up before trying to bring them together. Um, one, again, one of the biggest mistakes people make is trying to just jump into a song and play the whole thing all the way through when they haven't worked on their timing or their strumming or their individual chords or their chord transitions separately before bringing them together. If you do that, when you bring them all together, it will be much, much easier for you. You'll have a lot more success. So as you proceed, if you have any questions, let us know. You can email support at guitarfam.com. And if you haven't yet, again, go to guitarfam.com and create your complimentary account. You'll be able to go through the first module of all of our premium courses and some of the free courses we have there. And when you can, or if you'd like to, upgrade to a premium account. It's only $9.97 a month and you get unlimited access to all of our premium courses. And if you want to do a full year, it's only $97 a year. I'll see you there. Oh